Now that's just another groove to kickstart your morning. That's right. Good morning, Fiji. It's Gold FM bringing you the classic hits to fine tune your morning. And Fila still trying to fine tune her voice. And as always, Pedali still trying to wake up. Now this is where you'll find us every morning from Monday to Friday. On Daybreak with Pedali and Fina from 6 to 9. Join, Join us. नमस्ते दोस्तों मिर्ची रफ्तार से मैं अश्निल सिंह शामिल हो जाइए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फ्रॉम 3 टू 7 पीएम Tonight, U.S. Embassy staff in Suva unaffected by shutdown of American government services. Three men charged for allegedly defrauding the state of $3 million. And caring for people with cerebral palsy needs improvement. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. The Confederation of Trade Unions has given 14 days to the Public Service Commission to respond to its demand for a 110% pay rise for all civil servants. The Confederation claims it has evidence that permanent secretaries started receiving their new salaries from September 1st. The Confederation says it has confirmed that permanent secretaries have received pay increases of up to 110%. Well, it's in the circulars that have been circulated that they had their salary review been done. And uh, we even know the percentage of increases they have got. The three disciplinary heads have received uh, a salary of 221894. And you have concrete evidence of that? Well, we have evidence of that. And we have talked to the recipients of, uh, uh, of, of uh, those salaries. The Confederation of Trade Unions says they've always based civil service pay rise on relativity. If the permanent secretary got 110% pay rise, his deputy permanent secretary should also get 110% pay rise and down the line. That is the relativity gap. Otherwise, you will have pay discrimination gap. Civil servants around the country are also looking forward to see that the pay rise given to them because of the cost of living and other things that's really gone up. The Fijian Teachers Association, the Fiji Teachers Union and the Fiji Public Service Association aren't ruling out the possibility of industrial action. We are not discounting anything at this stage. Following attempts to get a comment from the Permanent Secretary for Public Service Commission and a personal visit to his office this afternoon, his secretary said the Permanent Secretary will issue a statement either by this evening or tomorrow morning. Mikalonga, FBC News. People are knocking on the doors of a Suva-based shop that allegedly took money from customers and failed to deliver products. The Pink Window Creations is registered as an online boutique selling clothes, costume, jewellery and fashionable accessories online. Ritika Pratap reports. 46 people have complained against the boutique. Pink Window Creations operates on a social media network and offers cheap deals on costumes for Eid, weddings and Diwali. Customers made bank deposits or paid cash at the silver office but are still waiting for their purchase. Uh, they do exist. So we took uh, the money along with us and we paid $200, uh, $198, sorry. And then they gave us the receipt and they assured us. And the receipt also has a stamp which says Pink Window Creations and at this date they, with their TIN number and all. We went to the shop and ordered and bought and then uh, we haven't received anything yet. Uh, I also went to the shop and I saw the deal. It was very attractive so I ordered two saris and I was promised to to be delivered with one sari on 6 September and the other before Diwali. But yet I haven't received any of that. The Consumer Council of Fiji has resolved 10 complaints, but the total sales are valued at more than $20,000. As deliveries drew near, the company was found to have closed its office at Sports City Complex in Lodala Bay, Suva. There were no replies to emails and phone calls by customers and the online page was also deactivated. They cannot be doing business this way in Fiji. And if they're trying to gain sympathy from public, well, sorry. Uh, consumers are totally uh, upset and they're simply demanding 
uh, the refunds. Last month, Pink Window Creations put out an advertisement saying that it hasn't closed down and is undergoing financial recovery. But this afternoon, we found the outlet closed. It also says customers will be reimbursed. Some will receive their items or be given a replacement. Paid advertisement has come out where they're saying that by 31st December we will refund your money or we will provide the item. But that's too late. And I'm wondering whether they are buying time. Pramila Kumar is urging other customers to come forward if they had a similar experience. Owners of the boutique could not be reached on the telephone number listed in their company registration. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The case of a businessman and two former civil servants charged in connection with an alleged scam related to the upgrade of the Nasori Highland Road has been referred to the Suva High Court. Firoz Muhammad, the director of TF John Bulldozing Company of Mba, Ilias Aturangadati, and Navita Laitamani Tokula appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court this morning. Muhammad allegedly paid $93,000 to the two former employees of the Department of National Roads. He then allegedly lodged false invoices and circumvented procedures to obtain an advantage of $3 million. Muhammad has been charged by the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption. Turangadati and Tamani Tokula have been charged with abuse of office and obtaining financial advantage by FICAC. The three will reappear in the Suva High Court on the 18th of this month. Fiji has a lot of ground to cover in caring for children with cerebral palsy. While the number of people suffering from the disability is very high, there is minimal spe special care available in Fiji. Shireen Lanta reports. A number of students at the Hilton Early Intervention Center School in Suva suffer from cerebral palsy. And despite a common misconception, it's not a mental illness. Cerebral palsy, it's a condition, it's a physical disability, and it's caused by damage to the brain around the time of birth or maybe before birth. And it causes a palsy in the muscles, so the muscles don't work properly. Children with such conditions are given physiotherapy treatment, but not all hospitals in Fiji have this facility. In terms of the health facilities at the moment, the physiotherapy department at the hospital offers physiotherapy services for children with cerebral palsy and that might be through some individual appointments or they might uh, come as part of a clinic. The Hilton School held a small event this morning in recognition of World Cerebral Palsy Day. People at the moment, they're not very aware of what cerebral palsy means. So they might see the children but not really understand how they're affected. And it's sometimes hard to tell from the outside how well a child's thinking because they can't always talk to express themselves. The school is working with parents in raising awareness and trying to improve the lives of children suffering from cerebral palsy. Shatin Lata, FBC News. The United States Embassy in Suva has confirmed that Fijians working at the diplomatic mission remain unaffected by the shutdown of the U.S. government. A budget bill hasn't been passed by the House of Representatives in America, meaning the U.S. government has to shut down non-essential services. The U.S. Embassy in Suva confirmed to FBC News that the vast majority of staff are locals who all remain at work with pay. Services provided by the consular section are fee-funded and will therefore continue. The embassy is working with retained fees and can therefore continue its operations, including visa issuance and passport operations. Coming up, Andi Dakumbao School to hold its first ever police cadet pass out parade. Isambulu binaka, na edango wadi sori ndalai, na makeo mani wasi ningono borota kina lali nekabi, maina tolu kina bitu, ena moni tingi na poro mbuka, ena mbula FM, na bandu ena sere. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this, or you could spend it like this. Tune into the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM Today Seed Music. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. 
It's breeding season for termites, and Biosecurity Authority of Fiji is asking people in Lautoka and Lambasa to stick to their advice to prevent any further spread of the bugs. Mikalonga reports. Termites move in the thousands and swarm towards anything bright at night. Between uh, 6.30 to, to 8 uh, is, is uh, the particular time that they swarm. And if um, houses have their lights uh, on or vehicles, Turn off the lights uh, during this uh, period and uh, of course uh, take the other extra measure of uh, lighting small fires uh, outside their, their compound, eh, outside their, their houses, uh, so that uh, uh, instead of uh, the termites uh, being attracted into your homes, uh, they are attracted to the light uh, developed by the fire and in turn it can also kill them. With 1,200 homes already infected in Lotoka and Nambasa, the biosecurity of Fiji wants residents to work together in preventing a queen termite from laying up to 30,000 eggs. It is a period where they reproduce or they find their mates, uh, male, males and females, and they uh, form colonies uh, in the soil. We are talking about thousands of queens, yes. Termites have been contained within Lotoka and their numbers have also been significantly reduced in Lambasa. However, in Lotoka, the authority still receives up to three reports of termite infestations per day. People would not like uh, the, the termites to invade their homes uh, because of the structural damage that they do, and it, uh, it uh, increases their costs uh, in terms of maintaining the home. To know if termites are in your home, knock on the walls to check for any softness, keep an eye on paint bubbles and mud tunnels, mm -hmm. and keep an ear to crunching sounds at night because this is when the termites feed on your timber structures. If you witness any of this, don't panic, but call the relevant authority. Mikalonga, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama is in London to chair the special session of the International Sugar Organization. The meeting will elect the organization's new executive director as the term of the current director, Dr. Peter Barron, will end this year. Mbaini Marama thanked the delegates who attended the 43rd session of the International Sugar Council held in Fiji in June. He also welcomed Sri Lanka, who has become the 87th member of the ISO. Premature deaths are so much of a problem that the health ministry has roped in civil servants to spread the message of healthy living. Api Salamidokar reports a two-day wellness symposium is pushing the need for people to care for their health. The health ministry believes its warnings about non-communicable diseases have been largely ignored. It's obvious that we're not doing the right thing as a nation. The recent Steps 2 survey, which was carried out after a lapse of 10 years, indicates that we are a very sick nation. The NCD crisis has obviously been talked about, but uh, what are we doing? We're looking at it as an abstract issue, and yet uh, we are all falling prey. Dr. Neil Sharma has urged civil servants at the symposium to take the message to the masses. NCDs can afflict anyone. These are no longer abstract. These are practical issues because we are seeing a lot more people not even living to collect their FNPF. Whilst our colleagues in Japan, colleagues in um, Austria are living into the 90s. Here you listen to the radio death news in the morning and it goes on and on. We will all die. There's no problem about that, but why are you 40? Why are you leaving your children at 40 uh, and not living up to 55 and enjoy the retirement with your children, your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren? These civil servants in their line of work will now be champions for healthy living, encouraging Fijians to make the right choices and prevent NCDs. Apisalome Doka, FBC News. Andiva Kumbao School in Sawani Naitasiri will hold its first ever police cadet pass out parade on Friday. Apisalome Dokar reports the cadet program was introduced this year. These 370 students of Andiva Kumbao School are in final rehearsals for the cadet pass out on Friday. We are doing this in support of the uh, Fiji Police Force um, school cadet uh, training program under the Nduabata community uh, policing model. Bulusalo Tenawalawalo says the pass out parade on Friday is historical in many ways. ACS is piloting this, uh, this program. And uh, secondly, 
this coincides with the, with the school's um, uh, celebration of the 65th uh, anniversary. The introduction of the cadet program has resulted in many positive changes among the students. Uh, I told the parents on Sunday uh, the, the change we, we've noticed in the girls. Um, the, the, uh, the responsiveness to commands, um, their alertness, uh, their being punctual, uh, the cleanliness, uh, all these things um, are, the, are the results of, uh, of, the, of this program. Come Friday, students, parents and teachers will make donations to the ACS Old Girls Association to assist in the 65th anniversary celebrations. Apisolome Thoka, FBC News. Time for sports now and here's Jamie with the latest. Good evening. Up ahead, the Fiji Sevens team has been named with Coach Ryan ready for the daunting first-time task of coaching a team he has not selected and Fijiana's back out on the international scene. Find out more after the break. Suraj ki pahle kiran ke saath din ki shuruaat ki jiye. Subha ka mangal prabhat aapko shubh ho. Subha subha ho khushiyon ka mila. ना लोगों की परवाह ना दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ Nimbula, methango nimi lote na isoro tumboa. Namo kia umi narua kina ona na vya kavi muni te kina vaka rombuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vya boka baro ta kini ndreko malolo. Eno rindi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai nama kia kina. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Fiji Sevens team was named this afternoon with Manueli Langai taking the leadership role despite copping a six-week suspension after the Las Vegas tournament this year. Shelvin Chan has more. No real surprises in the Fiji team that was announced this afternoon. Definitely changes will be coming in once coach Ben Ryan has made his round of the local tournaments. For now, the focus is on getting the team working. So, yeah, I had a very stra straightforward game plan against Fiji and, and when it worked, we did okay, but as everybody knows, you know, and every coach, and I've been on the other side of the fence, when Fiji get their A game going, you can't stop it. And that's, that's got to be my, one of my goals as a coach, to get that A game going as much as possible. The players will have to work harder to keep their places in the team. That's great because it gives me a chance to look properly at the players for the weekend. Also the four that are reserves that are playing for the other teams. and and. Uh, in both tournaments, the cream of, of Fiji's sevens players will be participating, so it also gives me a chance to see who else is out there on the radar. And Ryan is also clear on what happens if the team manages to get the Gold Coast title third year in a row. If the team wins the third title in a row in the Gold Coast, don't start cheering for Ben Ryan because it will have nothing to do with me. It will be the boys and it will be, it will be Alfredo Dere that's prepared the team well. Ryan will get a chance to see the team train tomorrow on Dandere, who will coach the team to the Oceania Sevens, before handing over the team to Ryan for the IRB Seven Series. The new coach will be taking place to Gold Coast, whom he has not selected, and he has asked Fijians to be patient. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. The Fijiana Sevens team is back on the international scene, leaving our shores tomorrow to compete in the Oceania Women's Sevens Championship in Noosa, Brisbane, Australia. However, with little time to prepare and not much sponsorship, this team is out to defy all odds by winning this weekend. Elena McDonald reports. There hasn't been much hype. However, just as the Fiji men's team prepares for the Oceania Sevens in Suva, so too are our women, but in Australia. The World Cup Sevens Bowl winners will take on New Zealand, Australia, Papua New Guinea and Samoa. They are lucky they play one uh, uh, club game and they, they have to play in the international uh, team. That's a big uh, task for us to keep them in the team and they have to play the standard of the international uh, level. 
Teams will play in a round-robin format before progressing to semi-finals and a final to determine the winner. Last night, they were hosted to a dinner by Air Terminal Services staff, which provided the team with T-shirts. At the end of the day, uh, they carry the, the hope of our nation. Uh, you know, and whatever the result, uh, we win some, we lose some. But we're certain that, uh, you know, uh, the fact that they've stepped up to the mark and they're willing to go and perform, uh, they're in champions, in, in, you know, in, in our eyes. And, uh, you know, they, they'll come back winners anyway. Fiji women have a point to prove this weekend. And if it means a surprise top place finish, all the better. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. South Sydney Raptors skipper John Sutton's inclusion in the Vodafone Fiji Mbati is currently in doubt with a rugged forward to undergo a medical clearance from team doctors. Officials are keeping close tabs on the second rower's medical report with three weeks out from the Rugby League World Cup. Talindal Vakadaka reports. It's been a superb NRL season for John Sutton. After being named skipper, he led the Raptors to a preliminary final, earning a Daily M medal nomination along the way. Now set to make his international debut with the Vodafone Fijimbati, officials are sweating on a green light from his club's medical team. He's, he's got to get his medical off um, his club at South Sydney and he's been carrying a, a knee injury for, for a number of weeks now in, in the final series and before the final series in the NRL. So we will we'll just probably have to, we have named him, um, and we'll wait the medical report and see, see what sort of news comes out of that. To lose a player of Sutton's calibre could be drastic. Yet Stone expects senior players like skipper Petro Dibinidaba to make their presence felt. He's obviously um, keen to come back and play before he retires, which is a great thing that he wants to do and something that um, yeah, is really personal to him. So you know, we've been speaking about it for a while now and he's kept himself fit playing in the Queensland Cup, which is a second tier competition over here in Australia. He's ready to captain Fiji and he really wants to make a difference and see if he can help some of the young Fijians along in this World Cup. Stone and the NRL players will join the team next Monday for a week-long camp in Pacific Harbour before they fly off to England on October 14th. Charlie Tavakavak, FBC Sports. Alotoka football side has been boosted by the inclusion of two Vanuatu players for the court's inter-district championships. Nico Jack and Jean Kaltak arrived last night and had their first training run with the side today. Having already played for the side at the Battle of the Giants in August, where Latoka lost in the final, this time around the imports hope to go one better. Indra Singh has more on the Blues. The Vanuatu Brigade has landed to boost Latoka's bid for a win at the IDC. Having played for the Blues in the unsuccessful Battle of the Giants campaign, this time they are hoping for a change in fortunes. It depends on the place to communicate with each other, with each other inside the field. Can the new Vanuatu rap will be featuring for the last time in the country and says it's time he lives on a high. We will put all our best and every training session we can work hard, play hard in the games and the tournament. We're going to put our best and we hope we're going to look forward for the boys and help them we can win the heads. Jack is joined by fellow countrymen who insist he likes to do his talking on the field. It's a great chance for the home crown and the home team for the tournament. Toka last won the IDC in 2008, which was President Shalendra Prasad's first year in charge. Now, the Blues are looking at every possible clue to get them the Lloyd Fairbrother Trophy. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Lombasa side has been holding two training sessions daily to prepare for the IDC. The Northerners, who are always the crowd favourites, are hoping they can do wonders in Lautoka. Here's interesting again. The Lombasa football side will be banking on the recent achievements of their wonder boy Roy Krishna to inspire them for the court's IDC title. Krishna, who hails from Siberia in Lombasa, has recently signed for Auckland City in New Zealand. It's a great achievement for Roy himself and for also for Fiji and for Lombasa. Uh, and we also have his uh, younger brother back in training with us, Chris Neal. The Bambasing Alliance haven't been on the winner's podium since 2011 and are looking at changing their losing streak. Training here twice a day and uh, the players are looking forward to, to the IDC uh, next week. Uh, we're just working hard and uh, hopefully we can go there and give our best. A minor setback for the team is that it has lost the services of Papua New Guinea internationals Korea Kopianga and David Muta. However, this has not deterred the Northern Giants. Those two players won't be coming in for IDC, but uh, we have uh, capable, capable players in the team. Uh, Misa is back from uh, injury and we have other senior players who will fit in 
uh, in place of uh, two PNG players. The western soil has not been a happy hunting ground for Lambasa, but the team is keeping its fingers crossed they are able to change the course of history come next weekend. In Racing, FBC Sports. The FUSA Games, formerly known as the Inter-Tertiary Games, begin in Suva tomorrow. The University of the South Pacific teams will once again be pressured by the Fiji National University. But for this year, there's a lot more to look forward to than just winning. Elena McDonald talked to organizers about their latest idea. The FUSA Games have been in place for the past seven years. It's the chance for students to break away from all the studies and battle it out through sport. The World Universiad Games used to be the draw card for serious athletes. However, something new is being proposed. Whoever is the winner, we want that institute to take part on behalf of FUSA. They will represent FUSA. So that way, the institute will also be involved in sending the team over. And, uh, you know, that, uh, through that way, um, uh, development will come up. Venues has been an issue this year, which means football will be played at Samambula's Ramlakan Park, while the inclusion of darts and cricket will be the popular sports this year. Come this time tomorrow, rugby and football will kickstart the 2013 FUSA Games. Two days after that, eight more sports over 25 categories will be competed for. USP campus will play host to most of the games, while upsets are certain to come from the likes of the Fiji School of Medicine and the Pacific Regional Seminary. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. That was your sports for tonight. Good evening. <laughs>《that the transition from analog to digital broadcasting from all television broadcasters, including Fiji Television, will be overseen by a holistic and coordinated migration plan. Weather time in Jen, wasn't it cloudy today? It sure was, Jackie. You only have to glance at the map. Just look at all these clouds throughout the country. Lombasa, on the other hand, managed to get fine weather all day. Time for temperatures and three major centres are on 27. Suva, Nandi and Savo Savo were our cool cucumbers today, while Lombasa was the warmest on 30 degrees. From very cloudy to fine conditions tomorrow, Suva and Savo Savo, usually plagued with rain and dull weather, are going to get some sunshine. Sakisi Maniaki, hmm, quite a unique name, from Townhouse Apartments is our choice photographer this evening. Thanks so much Sakisi and to everyone else for sending this in. Remember this screen behind me is your chance to show off your lovely authentic shots, so make the most of it. That's weather, till tomorrow, have a great evening. Thanks so much for that Genevieve. The headlines again, US Embassy staff in Suva unaffected by shutdown of American government services. Three men have been charged for allegedly defrauding the state of $3 million and trade unions demand pay increase for civil servants following a salary hike for permanent secretaries. To the poll question for this week and we're asking, can Fiji defend its Gold Coast Sevens title? Visit the FBC website to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's news for tonight. Until tomorrow, good night. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Oh, <laughs>
Nimbula, Oyo Mr. Ben, and Lapa, and Magiki Romano, and the Dunavimataka, Moniki, and the Rumbuka, and a Bula FM. Now we're doing a shilling. Yeah!